My name is Paulo. Welcome to ATP episode 28. I am joined by Kieran as usual. We are live. We are ready to roll. And today we're, we're diving straight in to some serious topics. So with that said, Kieran, take it away. Okay, well, um, because I didn't know you were going to put me on the spot, I haven't got anything up at the moment. So uh, we'll go straight into the top where I don't need any materials. Okay. I want to talk about this sort of prank that's been going around um, that's been doing the works recently called swatting um, for those of you that don't know what that is um, you probably won't believe this but basically swatting is where you call the police and tell them there's something you know Usually host- a hostage situation, on. usually. Yeah, yeah, something incredibly serious going on, like a hostage situation. And but you, you, you call up and tell them that, you know, you tell them your friend's address or something, or someone that you know, and then they send a SWAT team out to raid that person's house. And that, that's supposed to be a hilarious prank going around at the moment now. Mm-hmm. Personally, I think it is fucking mental, and anyone that's doing it needs to be kicked in the face for idiocy or some shit. Because <laughs> not o- not only is it absolutely ridiculously stupid, mm-hmm. it's dangerous too. I mean, the amount of um, you know SWAT teams there are. I mean, there is many. Let's just leave it at that. There is not many SWAT teams out there. I know you you hear a lot about SWAT teams being called to this place and that, but there really there is not many people that are fully qualified to be part of a SWAT team. Yeah. And so for you to waste their time calling them out to your friend's house as a practical joke, while they're out doing that, going to your friend's house because they think that your friend has kidnapped the president or some shit, then what could actually be happening is there is genuine people in need of a SWAT team across the other side of the city and they're not going to get the help they need so it's putting lives at risk and on top of that this is something that I read nearly happened to one person they had no idea this SWAT team was coming obviously so they have someone banging their door down you know trying to ram through they think that someone's trying to rob their house so their first instinct was to run into their bedroom and pick up a gun oh my god and so this SWAT team comes breaking into this house on first instinct this guy has no idea it's a SWAT team he thinks you know people are breaking into my house they're dressed in big heavy armor I need to defend myself I need to defend my family and so he shoots at the SWAT team they start shooting back and then, I mean, eventually they worked out what was going on. Yeah. Thankfully, but this guy was, if I mean, if, if he we would have come to the door with a gun, he probably would have gotten shot. Yeah. Simple as that. I mean, it's not so much like this in England because they're the, the, the laws on policing is, is different. But in America, if if you pull a gun on a police officer, they have every right to shoot you down. And so this guy could very easily have been killed. And maybe his family too in the crossfire because someone was an idiot calling the SWAT team on them as a practical joke and you know, this guy could have died that's that's how serious it is and, well, sometimes uh, it's not even so, a practical joke it's meant to cause deliberate harm to someone yeah and uh, sort of bring it to our community in a way I know there have been a bunch of, of streamers and YouTubers that have had SWAT teams called to their house I know I think White Boy 7th Street was one of them um, there was someone who got a SWAT team breaking into the house live on a Twitch stream. I can't remember who it was, but they was live on a Twitch stream. I think it was stream. White Boy, yeah, yeah. This guy, White Boy, is really big YouTuber. Been, yeah. And he ended up getting arrested. Anyway, because, you know, obviously it's like, why are the police at yeah. your house? And then you, you automatically are assumed to be a part of this, get in trouble in some way. But then they searched his house because obviously they have every right to because they're there and they found... A lot of marijuana and he ended up getting arrested and going to jail so 
I mean, shit happens. Obviously, like I'm. Yeah. I mean, I guess we could go into a marijuana debate, but I obviously think that it's like that's that's seriously a waste of a SWAT team's time. You know, to try yeah. and find like great, like the guy smokes weed. He's not gonna hurt anyone. He's not gonna kill anyone. And you're just wasting yeah. your time. I mean, and... what's worse is, um... yeah. I mean, what's worse, I'm sure most of you've heard of the YouTuber Minnesota Burns as well. Mm -hmm. um, people didn't call a SWAT team on him to his house. They called the SWAT team and sent them to his parents' house. That's fucked up. That's really messed and, up. I don't know. Maybe maybe they didn't know he didn't live with his parents or something. They assumed because he was someone on YouTube that he still lived with his parents. But I don't. That's just wrong, man. And I, th I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. I think it's just absolutely ridiculous. And if I found out someone had done that to me, I would be, I would be so pissed. I would be on their ass. I mean, you beat them up for sure. You, you take, you'd find them, well, and you would, you would Liam Neeson. Yeah, let, let, let's let's ignore the fact that I, I am barely five foot seven and, and hey, you skinny know as a rake. But stature means nothing. You know, size isn't everything. No, it's yeah. okay. You, you get the picture. It's really, really fucked up. To be blunt, it really is. And it's like, how do you catch the people who do it? Because most of the people who do do it are somewhat trained. I mean, at least with people who do it to cause harm to others. Like they're really well trained. I mean, they have their IP addresses hidden. They use a disposable line or a, a payphone, and they have a voice changer. So you really can't track them. And there are cases where people do get tracked down, and they get found out after doing this. And it's a really serious offense. This is like some se it is some serious shit. It is. It's a it's a felony. I'm pretty sure in the U.S. it is. Um, I don't know what the repercussions are in Great Britain, but it's a felony here. For sure. Yeah, it's it's felony here as well. Yeah. So messed up. I don't know. Yeah. It leads me to the question: It's like, why why would people do this? You know, what what do they get yeah. out of causing other people harm? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, there are people that have been caught, and they are facing serious repercussions. I know. One of the people that did it was over eighteen, and mm -hmm. so they're they're facing jail time. Because it's, I mean, yeah, I know normally wasting police time isn't a hugely serious offense. Normally you get hit with a fine or something. But this is more than just wasting police time. This is wasting police time, police resources, and threatening other people's lives. So people are, are genuinely, I mean, I think I think one of the people is, um, it's going to be something like three or four years in prison if he's found guilty It's going to court still or something, but... I think it leads back to that whole thing that Nukem always is like people are just so miserable in their own lives it's like they have to do this you know to yeah. I don't know, it gives them the same kind of pleasure yeah there are there are always those people who try to get pleasure out of someone's failure you know mm. and it's one of those kind of things where oh, I have the power to ruin someone's life so why not yeah it's like a really I shitty mentality so. And, I mean, there are obviously people in this little small community, at least from the zombies' end of it, that have swatted, that have been on the end of swatting. And I know there are people in the chat who can attest to hearing stories about it. And, of course, it's something that is extremely... I, I don't know. I feel like people react to it in different, in different ways. I think that your obvious reaction is shock. And some people find it funny, some people find it just awful, but at the end of the day, it's, I don't know, it's like one of those things, like, has technology gone too far, that this is so easy to do for so many people? It's like very, yeah. a very accessible thing. I don't know. I don't know, I just felt like it was something we should briefly talk about at least. You know, we, we like our controversial topics and right now this is probably the most controversial thing happening in well, the world. If you swat someone, you're an asshole, basically. That's that's yeah. the bottom line. Yeah. You, have, you are a no-life loser with nothing better to do and yeah. you should probably seek some medical help for 
how messed up your head is. <laughs> to put it bluntly. Pretty much. <laughs> That's, that's, that's about the best advice we can give. If you're thinking about doing it, don't. Because we will think you're an asshole. The person you do it to will think you're an asshole. The entire authorities will think you're an asshole. Yeah, it's, just, it's just a lose-lose situation. Everyone thinks you're an asshole. No, yeah. no. Nope. You don't want to be an asshole. No. <laughs> don't, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Exactly. Exactly. Does the chat have anything to add about this? Because I know that there are people in there who know about specific instances of this happening, and you know, I'd be down to talk about them if anyone is out there, if anyone is alive. Yes? No? Maybe? I guess not. No? Okay. Um, I guess it's time for the the other topic, which the other topic, which I, I don't really know if there's a transition between them because I don't I have no idea what this is, but no, apparently there is uh, no transition between them. Okay, That's well all. apparently Andrew, aka Perfect Lemonade, sent this into us, mm. and well, no, I, sent I, it I wouldn't Kieran. necessarily say he sent, yeah, he, he sent it to me. It, it was he wasn't necessarily for ATP, but I, I watched this video that he sent me and was just like, nope, this this needs to be on ATP. This is exactly our kind of thing, and it's something that I feel very personally attached mm. to so uh, I just sent you the video okay. and watch this yeah so everyone sit back relax watch and okay. yes swatting is random it really is by cat it is something that it's like when did it start why why do people do it I don't know Nobody will ever know. Oh, fuck. Wow. I guess you just read the title of the video. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Okay, let me, let me know when you're about to stop. Oh, we have Sith Bass in the viewers list. That's a name I haven't seen in ages. What? Damn. Damn, son, Sith Baz, join in the party, okay. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Alright, All right, let's get to it. My name is Will, and I sincerely think that rape is hilarious. When it happens to dudes. It's horrible when it happens to women, but men getting raped is hilarity. In Adam Sandler's comedy, That's My Boy, and again to the Greek, Horrible Bosses, Wedding Crashers, Abu Ghraib Prison. Wendy England was not a war criminal, she was a comic trailblazer. And hey, I myself was violated by my grade 8 socials teacher, a Ms. Tupper. Not a pedophile, a woman. And when she molested me, I was like, score, because I was a horny 13-year-old boy, and I totally wanted to have sex, and now I totally had had sex with an adult I'd trusted. My caseworker keeps trying to convince me it was a negative experience. Well, my current caseworker. I could never talk about it with my first caseworker, because she was a woman. Can't open up to them emotionally. <laughs> Not because I was raped by one. I mean, it was statutory. Not real rape. I mean, I wanted it. I must have wanted it, because I got an erection from her stimulating me and the fear. Physically, it felt really good. And at the same time, like, the worst thing that could possibly happen to me. Like, I was less than human. <laughs> that is funny! All the guys would laugh at me about it, calling me faggot for not enjoying it. And I was like, psych! I totally did enjoy it! Then they high-fived me and told me I was cool and that Miss Tupper was hot and they were jealous. It was the most popular I've been in my whole life. It was the happiest I've ever been. And I wasn't happy. But 
sometimes as a guy, if you want to fit in, you have to hide your pain, and humor is a great way of doing that. And that's why I sincerely think that rape is hilarious. Because I have to. Hi. Wow, what the fuck? Oh my god. That's... That's madness right there, holy... Mm. You want a, uh, a hard-hitting video to uh, really make you... Um, think that's... That's it. That is, that is 900,000 views. I mean, it deserves every single view, because that is... I mean, the guy in it is is an actor. It was, I think, I, I'm pretty sure he was an actor, and um, yeah, it's an actor. But uh, it's based on like a true story, I'm sure. true, yeah. yeah, yeah, or something like that. And that was incredible. That was incredibly well written as well. The story, mm -hmm. wow. And I remember watching it for the first time, and that last line when he says, "Because I have to," I was. I, I, I was I was practically in tears just because you know um, I've been there. Oh, it's such a sensitive and subject, and it's like I don't know. I mean, like for guys, it's just like yeah, you're gonna get aroused, and yeah, it's going to feel good physically, but the emotional damage is it's like beyond repair, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Obviously, like, there is like a real story, Penny, but the the guy was acting it, obviously, and it's like very, it's a very powerful story. You could see him crying, tearing up at the end, and you know, it's, it's like yeah. a very just genuine thing. That as a guy, it it's so funny because I feel like we are. I think in most cases we're a lot less emotionally connected to our physical stimulation was compared to girls I know it's they're very closely linked by hormones or whatever chemical balances there are in their bodies but for us there's there's such a detachment so it's almost trying to reconcile the emotional trauma of having basically everything taken away from you but still knowing that it it was an enjoyable experience in the moment but like thinking about it afterwards it's it, it, it's terrible you know and people's like oh guys can't get raped they all enjoy it no no, no. I mean yes like physically it will feel it will undoubtedly feel good but at the same time there's going to be a point where it's like this this is wrong this is a violation of everything i stand for and that's that's the real rape right there you know it's something that's just it's something that a lot of people can't understand because we often tie to tie a physical stimulation to you know emotional happiness it's like oh it's so great you know what he was saying is like oh you're so, you're so cool oh you got it with the hottest teacher and everything and like that's a part of you that wants to be like yeah it's it's all good it's okay but when you come and look back on things it's it's not okay it was a violation of everything you hold sacred i mean i don't know what this kid's mentality was when he was 13 but when i was 13 i was all for finding the one and having this really am amazing moment and sharing it with someone I love and you know and you, you, you that gets taken away from you when you're a 13 year old kid by some teacher and you everyone ex around you is like oh score man and that just it, 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 it messes you up you know and like it just keeps going and going and the rape really never ends because it's like this emotional experience that you have to keep reliving and you have to forget about you know you have to forget about however good it may have felt and just it, it, you just you're forced to forget about all that stuff and people just make you think about how good it feels and you know when you start thinking that maybe i wasn't raped is when they have won and you have lost and that's the scariest part with that story i think I mean, in my situation, it was it was slightly different to, to that. I mean, it was someone that I knew, someone that I was unbelievably close with. I mean, I was 
I was dating the girl that that, that raped me, and um, for me, um, having any sort of physical relationship after mm. after that experience, like it, it changed everything for me. Before I was your average horny teenager that you know as, as he said in the video it was just you know doesn't matter had sex mentality sort of thing and mm. since since it happened I've I've struggled to get physically close to anyone pretty much I've had I, I was I was um I mean, it happened in 2010-ish, 2011 maybe. Yeah, 2010. So it was four years ago now, and I was I was actually with you know, like in a relationship with this girl until well, about a year and a half ago, and so you know we were in a relationship still for two and a half, three years. Hmm. So. So you know, we still had that, that that physical relationship without wanting to go into too much detail. And it must have been hard. I I I just because I know obviously like there were medical things surrounding it, and yeah. I, I guess I mean I don't want like use them as like an, an excuse or whatever. But I'm sure when she was when she was over that, it made it a lot easier. Like when she was cured and everything. I mean, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and this is how I how I've always seen it is, it wasn't her mm -hmm. that did it. Like, like physically, sure, it it was it was her body, whatever. But it wasn't it wasn't her that was that that did it. And and so it, I, yeah, it got a little easier, I guess. But I mean, with time, obviously, mm -hmm. time is is one of the biggest healers. But it was it was never the same um so yeah that that was about four or five months into the relationship and and yeah and we were we were together for another two years at least maybe two and a half years after that and it was um yeah, it, it it just wasn't the same after that. It was it was there was a wedge. There me. was a wedge yeah. between you. Yeah. yeah, and I mean there there was sort of during that time there was a period where we we weren't together, and there was a relationship with another girl, and I mean that was completely different. It was it was uh, I I didn't have quite the same problem, but again, it still wasn't exactly. I guess perfect will be the right way of putting it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know watching that video just um, it brought it back. It, so I said it was that last line. At first, it was like I, I, I mean I, I understood the message of the video, and it was it was like yeah, I really understood. But that last line where he says because I have to, I I know that feeling. I I know it perfectly because I know how it was for me. I know when. When I uh, came out, as it were, mm -hmm. without wanting to, uh, without wanting to make it sound like I came out the closet, um, when I when I told the world of of my my secret, I guess I got I got a good response. I mean, I did for the most part because the thing about our community is we, we're all very accepting, and I know a lot of the people in this stream commented on the video and stuff. But at the same time, I got not just on the video and other places where I posted the video like I posted it on random websites just to get more exposure I got a lot of um yeah got a lot of, lot of hate just like you know you're a dude it, it doesn't count if you're a dude or it know, doesn't you, count like what what does that even mean what, yeah, it doesn't yeah. count it's like I had so many people ask me you know how is that impossible if you didn't want to do it you just you just don't do it. It's as simple as that. It's like not not entirely. I mean, 
Yeah, I just I I think that in the same way that it's like how can how can a smaller male rape a, a, a taller female an athletic female? I was like what what you know it's definitely not so much even the physical part but it's also the emotional shock yeah. of that happening. I don't think people understand what that's like to be in that kind of situation. And it's like, as a guy, you're so strong, you're so macho, you could just not, you know, you could just not perform or whatever. But it's not, it's not that easy because at the same time, it's an emotional shock and it's something that is very unsettling. But at the same time, it's something that takes advantage of the male body, as it were. It's not exactly easy to just turn it off like that because yeah. it, it, we are we do respond faster to stimuli we do respond more to almost any kind of stimuli so it's really a very very difficult situation and that's why people don't understand it because it's like oh, it should be easy but no it's not and especially women like I, I know guys other guys between guys like oh you know whatever they'll joke and it's almost understandable in the way it's like oh why wouldn't you enjoy it and, you know especially younger kids who really just they don't really understand it so it's you know it's fine whatever they'll understand it one day but women especially women who say oh men can't get raped we're distracting from our own rape culture it's like no shut shut the fuck up you have no idea what you're talking about it's like yes one more women are raped one in five women are sexually assaulted in the at least in the university environment of the united states but one in five women one in 33 men and that's still like there's still that one and of course yeah women are basically more than six times more likely to get sexually assaulted than men but you have to understand that as a woman as a woman you can't go around and just throwing it aside like oh guys can't get raped you know it's it's not a thing you're you're taking away from you know, the movement I've actually how about no how about you all work together so that people in general stop getting sexually assaulted yeah, you know, and I feel like that as a male, it is extremely difficult to, I guess, quote unquote, prevent rape. Really, I mean, unless you're traveling in a pack of four or five guys and you're walking around, yeah. I mean, that there are security in numbers, but it's very far and few and far between as to how males can prevent themselves from being in that situation because oftentimes we we feel like we trust like we can trust women a lot more you know, it's, it, i guess it's part of that complex where women are these motherly figures in society so we just kind of assume that women are tr more trustworthy than other guys you know because guys raping guys like oh it's like oh my god i'm so sorry that you know it's, it's such a common it's more common obviously than women raping men so we just automatically think like oh you know we can just we can trust women but when it happens it's almost the the shock of it actually happening keeps the rape alive so so much longer i think that's one of the main things i mean for me at least from my experience i got a much better reaction from males than females and there was someone that i know in real life and um because I posted the video on my Facebook and stuff, so so people in my real life could see it, and they sent me messages saying how I was a terrible person for insinuating that that could have happened. And I'm just like, I mean, I was I was shocked. I was like, what 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 the fuck are you talking about? And they're just like, how could you say that something so terrible happened to you when it can't happen to men? It can only happen to women. And why are you so insistent that you know? Um, men can have it as bad as women clearly women are the the oppressed mm -hmm. sex and and you should you should just you know forget about it. it obviously didn't happen or or you know or you wanted it or whatever or, or you probably raped them or something and i was just i was I, I i was honestly i was i was ready to just flip my shit and go crazy on them because i was really really wound up by that because they were basically saying that I was a liar and that it didn't happen or that I have exaggerated or something or I've done the, the, the classic age old thing where you hear of someone who has sex with someone and then regrets it and then calls rape on it and honestly I think the fact that this whole I don't want to get into feminism because 
we talk about that quite a lot recently and stuff but the whole rise of of the feminazis mm -hmm. as as they're labeled um they they basically they've completely changed the outlook on the way we we look at at males and honestly in some instances and i don't want to sound 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 wrong or or bad here but in some instances such as as something like 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 rape or or domestic abuse as well often the male is the oppressed one because nobody ever believes them because mm -hmm. we're we're forced to believe that women can be the only ones that are victims and males uh, are the they're, they're the ones that do the deed I guess it's BS everyone the, the whole victim blaming it's mm. so mm. so so much more on to guys especially women who think that men yes. can't get raped like oh, yes. definitely it's like what what are you doing you spend your life on tumblr and on social media sites basically talking about how awful victim blaming is and then you go around and say that men can't get raped like what does that you are literally blaming the entire gender like that's their it's their fault for being rapists it's their fault for being raped oh it's like oh great like that's fantastic you know what do we have to combat that nothing and i feel like in that way it's almost a power struggle where women really when it comes to sexual assault they have so so much power Definitely. because a woman cries rape and everyone starts rushing away or rushing rushing to her aid rather and then when a guy claims rape everyone just runs away and like oh was he drunk was he high did he is he is he a philanderer is he someone who's a womanizer it's like every single history lesson on a guy's sex his sexual relationships or anything like that is brought up and they just try to find every single excuse to acquit the woman because maybe she was you know, maybe she was desperate maybe she was under a lot of pressure to fit in it's like what the what the fuck that doesn't make any sense and people have for too long neglected the fact that this is something that 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 plagues our society and it sickens me because no one everyone is so afraid to talk about it because when you get situations that are so touchy like mental health or women raping men or just the fact that depression and suicide are real things that we cannot control everyone just loses their minds you know when especially when you talk about a university campus and there are so many great schools out there in the United States and in the world and very few times you will hear a school that is so about community service and involvement and caring for people actually talk about these really really tough situations and people pride themselves in being able to handle difficult topics or controversy or anything like that but at the end of the day if you aren't touching on the lesser known things the things that actually need attention then you aren't actually handling anything controversial you're handling something that is perhaps inflammatory but you're handling something that a lot of people are already involved with and some I, I think it just sickens me that people oftentimes can't take the burden of a difficult situation like women sexually assaulting men or the whole mental health stigma and try and change that because oftentimes people are just far too afraid to actually step out of their comfort zone to do what's right because people want to do they want to do good things, but they don't want to do good things at the risk of failing and feeling like they can't accomplish anything because the good things in life are actually too hard to attain without serious effort. And people just want to do it to feel good about themselves, and that's that's what really sickens me at the end of the day. And this rant is going on for a long while, but I think when <laughs> when you consider how many people are on the whole women's rights and stop sexual assault and this whole mental health issue there are, it's it's ridiculous i think that so many people are in it for the wrong reasons there are so many people who don't believe in what they're doing and at the end of the day you get people who are uneducated illiterate and unable to really understand the gravity of 
the situations on the extremist ends of uh, what it means to be depressed or what it means to really be sexually assaulted. I think the hardest the hardest part for me wasn't wasn't the the people you know saying oh you're you know, you're an idiot you're a worst you know you should have just enjoyed it you know you were lucky it doesn't matter had sex the the thing that hurt the most was when people said you know you're wrong this can't happen you're lying stuff mm-hmm. like that like i uh, i couldn't care less about um about the people you know giving hate because i know that they're, they're just they're just assholes mm-hmm. but they they don't care about the topic they just want to you know, they they just want controversy. They just want people to 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 hurt for some reason. Whereas the people that that specifically come out and call me a liar, specifically say, you know, this can't have happened to you. You you are exaggerating or making up. That's what hurts more. Because that's people then saying that the most traumatic time of mm-hmm. my life just just didn't happen. And and that's difficult to cope with. And then I know, I know. I always talk about this, uh, you know, the, the changes and how how I've come so far and whatever. And I do it all the time, and it's it's something that I pride myself on. But you know, it's still something that does it, it does it does affect me up until this day, four years later. I don't know. I don't know. It's just—it's a—it's a tough situation. Anyway, yeah. just a sidebar. Thank you, come for coming out, Sith Bass. You can catch the rest of the episode yeah. on YouTube. It's good to see you, yep. man. Um, but just in general, I think it's a very shitty situation. It's something again that we're gonna need to keep talking about until yeah. more people will more people will speak up about situations yep. like that because oftentimes people are too scared. So maybe there was a situation where it wasn't even rape or it wasn't even really full-on sexual assault, but it was just a situation where they were made to feel uncomfortable by a girl and they just can't talk about it because it's like, why wouldn't you know, why wouldn't you feel turned on by that or why wouldn't you enjoy that? So I think that there are a lot of people out there like that. It's just it's small situations like that. If we talk about them as much as we can, people begin to see that it can go the other way. Yeah. Anyway, I want to talk about what uh, what Ganzel was talking about earlier. I don't know if you're keeping up with this in the chat, mm. but uh, he got he almost got swatted, and he was saying that he got a dox sent to him by someone in the the zombies Twitch community, and he was saying that he was going to send a SWAT team to his house. And I, for do you know what a dox is? Yeah. Okay. Well, for those of you who don't know, a dox is basically the entire information of your family, you, where you live, phone numbers, names, everything like that. And it's it, it ranges from how detailed it can get, but it usually always includes those basic components, everything you would need to to falsify a, a swatting. And it just ends up being this, this cycle that Ganzel was involved with where he messed with someone too much or he maybe teased someone too much and that person got fed up, swatted him and then to get back at this person, someone else swatted him and it just turns into a field day and at the other day not the other day, at the what what am I trying to say? The worst of it is that it turns into a cycle where people are just continually swatting each other to get back at one another and it's an overall waste of resources like you were saying it's just pointless it's it's silly honestly people are just so miserable and annoying that one person does something and it sets off a cycle and it never ends hello nuka hello You stepped on a cat penny? Wow. <laughs> One of your three cats. How can you even live with yourself? Just, just. And we talk about some, some serious shit on, on this show, but, I mean, that's too far. That's too far. It's, oh, it's too like, far. You know, swatting, sexual assaults, mental health illness, like, 
stepping on a cat, and that is just like right there above everything yeah. else. Yeah. For shame. For shame. Mr. K. He just called you Mr. K. I like that, actually. Mr. K. Better than the special K. I think it's very, Mr. K. That's very professional. I'm, I'm digging that. But. I know. Oh, VPNs. Apparently, VPNs are a way to protect yourself from getting swatted or doxxed or anything like that. I don't know. VPNs. How much are VPNs while we're on it? I know a lot. Of, actually, there are a few people at school here who have them set up so that they can't get tracked by, I, I don't know, I don't know who track students yeah. at school, but I guess there are people who have them. Okay, have fun in federal prison, Penny. Enjoy your time. I hope it doesn't get blown up by a radioactive explosion. <laughs> what? Well, well, Chern Chernobyl. It was, a, it was a joke, but. Oh, I got you. Yeah, I got yeah. You. I got you. Did Not you ever see that story on Imgur? It was like, uh, there, there was a couple that was breaking up, and the one guy goes, "There's still so much chemistry between us," and the girl goes, "Yeah, there's also a lot of chemistry in Chernobyl." <laughs> <laughs> 50 bucks a year? Jeez, would you spend 50 bucks a year to protect your, your privacy? Your data browsing? I don't, I don't, I don't know how 50 bucks a year. <laughs> I can get a VPN. I mean, I don't know what I have to hide, but... I mean, your, your pornos. Oh, of course. Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. You know, we, those, we don't want we, we don't want you becoming part of the fappening. The fap all those all those secret. What are you drinking? Mountain is that Mountain Dew? No. Oh, okay. Tango. Oh, Tango is really Tango is really. I haven't had Tango in years. No. Oh. No. I would I would have been pissed if you didn't have Tango in America. Oh, we like have Tango. Night. No, we have Tango. I it, I don't think we sell it at that many stores, but it's delicious. I can get ones for ten dollars or less. Can I get one on my phone? I, mean, I don't know why I'd want a VPN on my phone, but... I mean, that's, that's where you film the porno, so obviously. Oh. <laughs> it's amateur. Oh my god. <laughs> this is really uncomfortable right now. I am... Um, I, I do try sometimes, just to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. It's fun. It is. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Pro tip to all of you watching, you want... You want, uh... You want some fun for, uh... A few minutes, just try and make Paolo uncomfortable. It's quite easy, and and his reactions were always hilarious. SMH, SMH. Wow, Penny. You know, she used to make fun of me for how bad I type sometimes, <laughs> and look at her now. She's just, she's just done. She's finished forever. <laughs> No, I miss I miss the, I miss the good old days of ATP, you know. I mean, now obviously the show's getting back on the swing of things, and we had, oh look, VPN, but we had. <laughs> <laughs> this just turns into a fucking shopping channel or some shit. Thirty-nine best value, forty a year. Secure VPN account, P2P, five device. So it just works. It just works like forty bucks a year, and. What would make me uncomfortable? Do please do tell me, what would make me uncomfortable? <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm going to take it and use it against you. Mm, great. So. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't fucking wait, man. <sighs> what phone I got? I got the iPhone 5s. Good sir. Cards against humanity with all the packs on. But I don't even understand what ExpressVPN visit site. Well, th this show is apparently over because Paolo's too busy shopping. I'm not but... shopping. <laughs> <sighs> Cars Against Humanity with all the packs on is so confusing. If you have e if you have ever played it. It is disturbing. It is like there's some weird. The, there's an entire pack of weird anime shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like what? What? I don't. I don't understand. 
you know? <laughs> done with life. I'm already done with life. I was done with life a long time ago. Yep. Yep. In other news, Kieran has an iPhone now, so if you're, tr- if, you're, if you're trying to get down with that, you can hit him up on that iMessage. You're the only person that's actually sent me any messages on it yet. Well, because I'm using the same SIM, like I've still got all my contacts and stuff, and I don't have to change a number, so I don't have to get any numbers from anyone. So literally, you're the only person that's messaged me. Well, I'm a special person. I'm a special. You are special. Thank Very you. special. Thank There's you. an entire pack of porn-related cards. What? What even is this game? Cards like, you don't know what Cards Against Humanity no, is? No, no, no. I, I, I know what it is. What I'm saying is like. It started off. It was quite a fun little game. It was. It was. It was crazy shit. But like, in general, it was you know a bit of fun. But it's getting way too weird now. And and Penny, I don't use Kick anymore. I don't need that shit. Penny, just make your Penny, just make your email address or something. Like make an like make make another email address and add it to your iMessage, and then you can actually, then we can actually have like a like an ATP group chat or something. We should that do would, that. That, that would be fun. fun. That would be fun. Yeah. So wait, like for a VPN, what is the what's the same connection? Like, does it work off your like your cell signal, or does it actually work off something else? Please do tell me. By the way, my internet speed here is amazing. The download is <laughs> the download's pretty bad. I mean, not bad, but not as good as it was at home. But I have like an eighty upload. Jesus Christ! So we're, we're never gonna have problems with streaming. Yeah, no. And if by some miracle you somehow get back into YouTube, you're gonna be uploading videos so fast. Yeah, so fast. I mean, ATP uploaded so fast uh, this week, last week when we put, we put it up. That was that was lightning quick. Jeez, man. Jeez. And that was what an hour, an hour of video at least. Yeah, it was an hour, fifteen minutes or something like that. Also, you know what? Big middle finger to Windows. You know, they asked me. They asked me to update to Windows 8.1. I'm like, no, never mind. I'm not going to update it to 8.1. And sure enough, they just sent me a little screen alert that says, we're restarting your computer in X amount of hours so that we can finish installing 8.1. It's like, what? I didn't ask for this. I didn't even download it. Uh, I, I've Ever since I got my PC, from day one after I got my PC, which is nearly a year ago now, mm-hmm. um, I was being told, you know, you need to update to 8.1. I've just said no every time. Hmm. You know what sucks? Apple trying to download freaking U2 onto yeah. your... Do you hear about that? I mean, I, yeah, I, I did. I don't have it. Like, I don't. I don't either because I didn't have enough space for it, thank God. But Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if... Because this, this one belonged to someone else before it belonged to me. I don't know if they had it, but I don't have it because yeah. it was restored to factory settings. So. You have five up? Hey, you know what, Ben... It's the little things that count in life, and it's you not the size. Five up. It's not the size of the up. It's how you use it. Five up. Your phone is an iOS six. Wow, you're a badass. My phone is an iOS jailbroken. I would, I would fucking kill for five up. I have 0.8. You know, the important thing is that you have your health. <laughs> Do I have my health? Do I? I mean, you have your free health care. Yeah, uh, I, do. I do have that, you know. So, so when I inevitably become fat and and unhealthy, I can become, use that to help. Fat. I mean, unless you move to America, in which case you're going to become fat and unhealthy. Well, from what we've been discussing earlier today, I, I'm going to become fat just from the eight days I'm in America. I thought it was nine days. What? Is it nine days? I don't remember. A yeah, funny story. Do you remember last year when you we were? Uh, what, what is it? It's like oh, I'm going to save up for like a PS4 or whatever. And I was like, oh, it's going to be so great. And then Liz was like, oh, I'm just going to, I don't remember. She was just going to, she was going to save up for, for something. And then, oh, no, she was like, she was going to get like a 3DS. Do you remember that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then she was like, oh, my God, Kansas is so great. I'm going to get a PC. I'm going to play custom. 
like, like this, like a year ago, sort of August time, the plan was both me and Liz were going to get a PS4 around this time. Yeah. And we were both going to get a 3DS. Actually, not, not around this time, around... Like a month about, later. Like a month, like in October. Yeah. Yeah, so so about, about this time a year ago. Yeah. And we were both going to get a, a 3DS as well, so we could play the new Pokemon game together. And I'm the only one that got the DS... And Liz bought a fucking PC, then I bought a fucking PC, and none of our plans actually happened. Because at one point we were all going to be getting fucking PS4s or some shit, and not one of us has bought one. It's nearly a year later. See, that is that is the influence I have, right? Yeah, we need to fucking get rid of you before you start controlling our lives or some shit. No, you know what? I need I need referral money. Like the com- the computer companies that you bought your computers from need to give me some money because. Like that's that's some that's some good salesmanship right there. I mean, it was you that that recommended. Well, no, I I found the computer and you said go for it. Yeah, is the exact same one but slightly better. Yeah. And then you did the exact same thing with the graphics card that I upgraded with. Like, oh, your graphics you, card you is are... sick. It's better than mine. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. On accident, see, Penny. You know, I could run. I could just go out of my I could like open my dorm window and shoot a fucking bazooka and it would kill someone and be like sorry I shot my bazooka on accident yeah exactly it's not the same thing exactly it's lucky Liz isn't in here Liz would be going fucking crazy right now about what about the fact that there was a cat and it was hurt does Liz like cats yes Liz loves cats oh that's right yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. cats are like her favorite thing yeah, that's right. Everything is her favorite thing. True. true. She, I mean, she said she was going to come in, but she didn't in the end. Yeah, maybe she so. fell asleep. But she's coming to England, so yes, you, you I guys... Will be, I will be do you, meeting Do a Liz. vlog. Do like an ATP vlog or something. Yeah. Two weeks yesterday will be when I meet Liz. I mean, that's it's a shame. So she, I've, I've tried to convince her to come to Cardiff so we can hang out for longer rather than just the one day, but apparently, I don't know, something more important is this in London. And, I mean, she could come back to Cardiff with me. We could go out and get drunk. We could then do loads of awesome shit. We could do ATP. We could do ATP live. We could do ATP with Liz. Yeah. And, and she is coming she's to letting the whole team down. Like ev- Everyone right now in the chat, go and tweet at Liz. Tell her to come to Cardiff. So we, we yeah, can Nukem, do a, get on that. Nukem, get on that. So we can do ATP live with Liz at my side, except it won't be in this room because I'll have already moved out by then. What? Oh god. Oh dear. Nuka making making suggestions. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. No, no, no I mean, no, no offense to Liz, but... No, I'm too old for Liz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that. I mean, I think that was pretty much assumed, Nukem. I, I, yeah. yeah, I don't think the the pedophile. You, you're not you're not the first person to try and ship me at this. No. Though you are definitely the first old man to not hit on her. True, true. That was weird. You remember Jay? Mm. That was that yeah. was on, that was like the most disturbing thing I've ever so witnessed weird. in my entire so weird. life. Dude is like 35, Liz is 17, and he's like, like he's not even talking to her. He's just like yeah. posting on the forum. Like, Liz is really hot. Like, quote, like direct quote. Like, what yeah. are you, what are you doing? I don't know. That was thing. Creepy weird, old men. Yeah. Oh, story time. Story time before we, we conclude the show. So yesterday, I was at my grandma's birthday lunch, or whatever you want to call it. She turned 88. So it's great, really great time. And when we got to the restaurant, there was a wedding reception in the back of the restaurant. And like, granted, the restaurant was nice, but it's not the kind of restaurant you'd want to have a wedding reception. And even if you did, you should probably rent out the whole place. But still, they were there. They were in a back room. There were probably like eighty to ninety guests, and it was so. Cr- I was like, oh, it's a, it's an, it's an Asian wedding because. Yeah, they were at an Asian restaurant. They were speaking in what I assume was Mandarin. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. And the bride was so young. I was like, oh, I wonder what her husband looks like. It's, and then there's out comes this wrinkly old white man in a tux that is way too big for him. It's like, what? 
What are you doing? <laughs> what? What? And then, and then you went and stole some and cake. Then, and then I, I crashed the wedding, and it was the greatest thing I have ever done in my entire life. Here, have a look. I, I think you put pictures on Twitter. We can probably post them in the chat. Pictures are on Twitter. Here, that's that's part of it happening. Yeah, you can barely see that, so I'm just gonna get the pictures off Twitter. Okay. <laughs> he had swag, though. I mean, he had like anti-swag. If that's what you're talking about. Jesus, you tweet so much. Jesus. I don't tweet so much. Oh no, no, no! I just couldn't see it because they're on Instagram rather than. Oh, then post them on Instagram. Get the get the Instagram out. I am. I am. No, it wasn't like fourteen-year-old girl marrying thirty-year-old man. It was like thirty-five-year-old girl marrying like sixty-year-old. Well, not four, thirty-five. I mean, like forty, forty to forty-five. But regardless, the guy was easily over sixty. So that's weird. Like at that point, it's just kind of. Mm. So yeah, here's what happened at the wedding. There's my pog champ face. I I do I do have that pog champ face. I will. Uh... <laughs> That's gross. I never got that. I, I mean, yeah, age difference is good. I know girls generally prefer men who are older than them, but usually I feel like that's a year, like maybe a year to three years older. But 15 to 20 years? Yeah. yeah. I know one of my um, old teachers married one of his students. What? Yeah. That's just not funny. not they, they didn't start dating until she wasn't his student until she left school, but still it's... No, they, 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 were, they, were definitely, they were definitely doing naughty things behind closed very, doors. Very, oh, very, oh, very oh, possibly. Sure. Oh, for sure. How much she cost? Wow, that isn't offensive at all. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And it was sad. And I know um, a lot of my favorite teachers from my old school, a lot of them were accused of being, uh, of being you know, pedophiles and, and perving on, on the girls and I know a large chunk of some of my favorite teachers have all been well not so much fired but they were told either leave the school and we'll give you you know a good reference and and you know no questions asked and stuff and, and just go find another job or you will be fired and you will never get a job again and That's terrifying the worst bit is <sighs> There's no way these people were. I mean, they were friendly. In fact, they were incredibly, incredibly fr friendly, and they were they were genu they were the sort of teachers that you you were friends with as well, mm -hmm. and and genuinely like it seems to me like from what I've heard from other people because obviously I'm not at the school anymore and and from the way this the story sounds it sounds like it was a lie that went too far, mm -hmm. and it went from you know someone getting uncomfortable with with one of the teachers being maybe a little bit too friendly with them mm -hmm. which I mean yeah I mean one of them he was he was my head of year for the entire time I was at that school he was one of the big influences on me during my depression phase I mean I was I was really struggling and he was one that I mean I remember after the first year of my um, uh, uh, graphics GCSE I was at a you know, I was at a U grade. I was basically zero. That was my that, that was my score. I had zero. Wow. And that was through um, that was on all of the coursework and all the practice exams and stuff. I was I was at zero, and he was the one that you know pushed me on to to you know keep trying and stuff. And I ended up getting a C in that in that thing. I fucking I fucking rocked that shit in the second year. And that's awesome. And like and he was he was my history teacher as well. And I went from a sort of mid C grade student and I ended up getting a B in that exam because he was a fucking good teacher and yeah he was overly friendly I mean I remember our last lesson he went round and gave every single student a hug but like he'd been our head of year he'd been you know with us every step of the way for the last five years he'd been teaching that class for the last two years and like it was it was a big moment I guess and it just makes me feel horrible that that people like him have 
lost their jobs because I don't know. Maybe 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 they were, but the fact that it was it was a good six or seven teachers, and all of them, I remember them. They they were friendly. They were decent people, and I I highly doubt that all of them were. Yeah, uh, there's always that girl who. Yeah, you know, there, there are people definitely who are overly friendly. And did he push his hips in on the hug? Oh my god! Oh, can we not thank? Let you me let Jim? me put it this let me put it this way. Uh, he was he was an attractive man, and I'm sure some of the girls were pushing their hips in. Mm, wow. Yeah. Okay. 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 No. Yeah. Uh, are, the, are there these guy these these teachers who are like middle aged men? They're not attractive or anything, but they're nice people, and they're very friendly, and they'll like they'll be like there will be a girl talking to them, asking questions, and she'll be very concerned, and then he'll do something like put his hand on her back or put his hand on her shoulder, and then a girl will just take this, oh my god, he wants to have sex with me. He's gonna rape me. Yeah. What? What the fuck? No. No, he's just trying to be nice. He's just he's yeah. just showing, like, yeah, okay, if it's on your upper back, fine. That's fine. If he's on your shoulder, fine. If he gets lower, you know, if he's going to your lower back, yeah, that's when you need to stop, but... For the most part, he's probably just trying to comfort you because he cares about you and he's a good teacher, you know. And people have different teaching styles, and a lot of people like to be close to their students and like their students to know that they can be, oh, they can be allowed to just take comfort in their teacher because that's what a good teacher should do, honestly. So I feel like that that's one thing. Girls definitely crying, uh, crying wolf in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's a real shame. I wish this guy was still in the school because I was um, planning on going back and oh really, and you know trying to maybe set something up ATP style in the school. But you know I I wouldn't trust any of the teachers that are left anymore. If he's sniffing your seat, then you know there's something wrong. What? <laughs> oh my God, Nukem! What is going on? What? <laughs> the sniffing your seat? What? I don't think I've ever. That's disturbing. That is this. Yeah. Right, that is that's too although, much. That's too much internet although, for one day. Although there was a teacher that was um, five. Uh, he he was genuinely a pedophile. That was when I was in year, year eight, so I would have been twelve, thirteen ish, and he was creepy. He was about I don't know sumo wrestler size. But let's let's go with that. He he was huge and yeah he, he basically he would spend the entire lessons ignoring the boys completely and basically going over to the more attractive girls and you know sitting with them and have, making conversation and stuff and, and the school tried to cover up they said no he, he left because of his health it's like no he didn't he fucking tried to have sex with one of the girls or something that's shit. gross that's, it was mm. it was he was a disgusting man he was horrible. Disgusting old men who are perverts need to go. I mean, it was weird. He was a really good teacher because he was utterly mental. See, it's the utterly mental ones that try and yeah. pull shit like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he, was, he was a good teacher. He knew what he was talking about, but he was an asshole because he, he tried to get... He, basically, he, he, uh, he was already incredibly sexist against the males. And then I see you pulling those fucking faces again. <laughs> what the fuck do you think you're doing? We're trying to do a serious show here, and you're pulling faces into the camera. You're like, talking like about a like four year old. We're talking about like old men hitting on young women, and like trying to tap that ass. You know, it's not exactly. I mean, yeah, it's a sensitive topic, but it's funny as shit. <laughs> It's like how desperate do you have to be to like just like want to have sex with your students, you know? It's like do you not get ass at home or something? Yeah. <laughs> like Like Jesus what would your wife Christ, think? I don't even know what happens to the show, man. This this happens almost every show. We'll go through a bunch of serious topics and get really, you know, really emotional and, and whatever. And then by the end of the show, we're just talking shit and you're pulling fucking faces at the camera. And <sighs> See, Nukem. See, see Nukem, he's a good person. He said, I'd get a hooker before going that low. Exactly, you know? That's the kind of mentality we need in our schools. Exactly. You know? 
I would I would get a uh, I would get a hooker rather than raping your kids. Exactly. Like that that that's and how like, you sell a school and to like me. when you and when you get if you get in trouble for you know, consorting with a hooker, it's understandable. It's like ah, you know, he he he's a man. He has his needs. You know, that's like, that's society's excuse for men who hook up with hookers. You know, it's it's a genuine excuse too. You know, a man needs what a man needs. No. So I mean, like, it's it's not exactly the most moral thing. It's not exactly reputable, but it's a lot better than banging sixteen year olds. As a thirty five year old, I mean, if you're a sixteen year old banging a sixteen year old, yeah, just, you know, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I mean, technically, I, uh, it's wrong, but technically, that was, if it was, I don't know, the sixty year old banging a sixteen year old, that wouldn't be illegal in England. What? Legal consenting age in England is sixteen. That is that is messed up. That is that is disgusting. That is terrifying. And so technically, it wouldn't be illegal for someone. It will be severely frowned upon. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> well, you're saying it would be upon. legal. But <laughs> technically, it would. Yeah, because they. You're they saying that like to... you could, you're saying that a young man. Could have sex with a grandma, and it would be fine. Yeah. As long as they were both consenting, yeah. That is weird. That is really weird. <laughs> I'm surprised there are movies made about that shit. But yeah, it would. It would. It would uh, technically be legal. not if if it was a teacher and a student. That's not legal. Ah. Uh-huh. But if it was just two random people that met in a bar and just happened to hit it off, you know, as 16-year-olds and 60-year-olds do, mm-hmm. <laughs> then, yeah, technically, as long as they were both consenting on both... That's uh, weird. ...of their right mind, they would... They I, mean, would I don't. I don't think a 16-year-old and 60-year-old ch- deciding to have sex with each other can be considered right-minded at all. But, hey, I mean, love is love. The universe wants what the universe wants. All right, Penny, that's great. I totally understood what that said. Thank, thanks, Penny. It means a lot. It sounds like it says you should probably end this episode because it is it is going places that you do not want it to go. So I will take your advice. Your keyboard switched to Russian. Okay, it's great. Do you need awesome. Do you need Russian to translate this? Okay. All right, guys. We love you. Thank you for the episode. We'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah.